Right now, we're standing on the corner of 66 and Bishop Street in the city of Chicago, you know? Growing up here, it's basically just trying to survive and stay alive, man. The situation that happened in my community, you know, on my block. A couple of guys pulled a couple of pistols on me and my buddy. I wanted to come back and retaliate with a gun, but one of the members of Ceasefire helped me resolve my situation without violence. Probably saved my life and another life, you know? We're on our way to a, where an actual shooting took place. Retaliation can happen in the first 24 hours. Once it's out there like that, then it spreads like, like a virus. When we're doing a violence interruption, we go straight there, talk about who's doing the shooting, what, why did he shoot you, and then can we stop it? Can we do it? What can we do to stop it? And when, when someone tell me it ain't going to stop, in the back of my mind, I'm trying to think of somebody who got a lot of influence over this guy. Maybe mother, uncle, father, contact that person and say, hey, man, I talked to your nephew. He's hot, and he's planning on doing it. Could you, could you calm him down? Could you talk to him? We went with Cease Fire. You know, what hospital he go to? As physicians, you saw people when we broke news would just get up and walk out, basically emotionless. And that was the most chilling thing of all, I think, you know, that you were watching basically the beginning of a retaliation. If you didn't do something right then and there, it was going to be too late. When a trauma patient comes in, a ceasefire will be called, very much like I'm called when there's a gunshot wound. They would speak with the patient to the family, and they're putting as many hours as I am. Children shooting other children. The United States has a particular problem with this violence. I spent 10 years with the World Health Organization working on infectious diseases. Violence behaves like an infectious disease in every single way. The ceasefire program, we are applying exactly the methods for control of infectious diseases with what we call violence interrupters and outreach workers. And what they do is they interrupt transmission and shift norms. All right, hospital response, Giles. One guy got killed, and we had another guy get killed. The retaliation. Yeah. I talked to the group on the south side. Monel talked to the group on the north side of the street. Both of y'all got a body. Let's stop it before it escalates. And ain't been no escalation. Oh, that's good. When they're out here, abnormal behavior becomes normal behavior. A guy think it's normal to step over a dead body and feel nothing about it. He think it's normal. I'm an outreach worker. I'm on call 2424. It ain't like I got angels on my caseload. These are high-risk guys, man. They may call me and, you know, a lot of nights I have to get up out of bed, man. I'm in court with guys. You know, I'm in probation offices, job interviews, 12-step meetings. I'm at schools with guys, man, trying to get them in school, trying to help them, trying to help them get in shape. And I love, I love to see guys make the transition, man. A lot of my clients have little brothers, and I stress it to them that you say you don't want your brother to become a part of this, right? But you all he see. You all he see. One of the ways that we evaluated ceasefire was to interview the clients. They really are high-risk clients, out of the mainstream of society, disconnected from its institutions, alienated from the mainstream in the country. The program had been very successful in serving them. There were very significant reductions in crime that were associated with the introduction of ceasefire. Gang involvement and homicide went down. Shootings and killings went down. Declines between 17 and 24 percent. Pretty substantial. Ceasefire came into 10th District in 2006. They were instrumental in deterring a lot of gang violence. They were very successful. Maybe that if you get rid of the violence, the neighborhoods can emerge and improve. The educational systems can get better. The teachers will want to teach there. The businesses will want to go there. The kids will actually be able to concentrate and so on. Sign up to stop the shooting, stop the killing. It's a beautiful night. We just wanted to feed the community, let them know about what we're doing and connect with them, you know, let them know that, you know, 
We're here for them. So we're grilling corn, be a little bit more health conscious. They've been doing a lot around here. And this here was a, a wild, dangerous corner here. That's why I like them so much. They changed the neighborhood. 